These dogs are honestly trying to play the role of shepherds and drive the bulls into the corner of the pen so they can be transported. The Border Collie breed is perfect for such work. They are incredibly swift, strong, can intimidate the hoofed animals if necessary, and they can control their enthusiasm, not causing harm to the cattle, but skillfully guiding them where the owner needs them to. The fairly large size and endurance allow Border Collies to direct even very large hoofed animals. However, the dogs didn't know what they were getting themselves into. Domestic bulls are accustomed to farm life, but when they see a snarling dog face, there is instinctive resistance to the predator. Moreover, if an aggressive ram might be frightened by a large dog in retreat, a domestic calf recalls the legacy of wild ancestors, powerful aurochs who didn't back down from danger. Therefore, the bull boldly counterattacks. The bull utilized its clear mass advantage, went on a charge, easily escaped from the corner of the pen, and started fighting the dog. The Border Collie skillfully dodged the enemy's strikes, but being so close to a heavy bull is way too risky. The hoofed animal tramples the dog. Fortunately, the dog doesn't suffer serious injuries or wounds and quickly jumps up. This is quite a common occurrence. Bulls are probably the most challenging domestic animals to control precisely because they respond to attempts to intimidate with aggression. Quite often, these herbivores behave more aggressively than many predators. They use their weight advantage and send herding dogs flying at the first opportunity. Moreover, there is some loyalty among the hoofed animals. When one bull gets tired, he is immediately replaced by another, as if they have shift work. The dogs are lucky that the entire herd doesn't attempt to trample their opponents. However, gradually the wave of adrenaline courage leaves the herbivores, and they calm down. For the dogs, the main thing is to survive this moment and not let the mighty hoofed ones smash the pen. But these dogs won't underestimate, and especially provoke, even the farm-acclimated domestic bulls anymore. Many dogs have the bad habit of breaking free and running in pursuit of a swiftly moving target. In such cases, the dog may bark and even grab the target with his teeth. Have you ever had to deal with this? It's pretty unpleasant, isn't it? These horses also didn't like it when, during a routine beach walk, a dog suddenly, for no reason, lunged at one of the hoofed animals. However, the huge beast immediately found a way to respond to the unprovoked aggression. A powerful blow, precisely to the head, disabled the bulldog. Most likely it survived, but when it comes to, it will remember such a lesson for a lifetime. This is one of the most beautiful and sad stories of the confrontation between hoofed animals and predators. A vast herd of caribou migrates through the taiga in search of rich plant pastures. The hoofed animals are very strong and numerous, but among them are vulnerable members of the herd, the calves. They are already strong enough to run almost on par with adults, but significantly weaker in strength. This was noticed by wolves who were chasing the herd. They run after their prey, systematically seeking suitable targets. The predator's goal is to attack the herd from the flank, separate the weakest animal from the rest, and grab it when the other hoofed animals run far away. Wolves are strong, but their main advantage is endurance. After a long chase, the predator suddenly closed the distance. If before they were running after the caribou for several hours in the distance, now the predators accelerated and approached striking distance. They selected a target, a female with a fawn. A complex positional struggle began. The calf keeps up with the rest of the herd and stays amidst the large hoofed animals. If the predators try to attack it there, the other deer will simply knock the wolves to the ground and trample them. The mother also tries to protect her calf. She maneuvers, takes the baby away from the predators, but the wolves act too cohesively and precisely. In the end, the wolves manage to separate the fawn from the rest of the herd. 
Now one of the wolves chases the fawn away to deal with it quietly on the side. Even the mother couldn't protect the calf because other predators interfered. However, the arctic wolf doesn't know who he's dealing with. This fawn is very young, but the desire to survive is so strong that the little one breaks free from the predator. The wolf is shocked. The beautiful and dramatic chase lasts much longer than he expected. Usually, it takes a seasoned hunter a few seconds, or maybe a minute, to bring down a fawn of this age. Here, the fawn leads the wolf for almost half an hour. Such speed was not expected from him. The little one maneuvers, dodges the enemy's fangs, runs as fast as he can at the limit of its abilities. It is waiting for help from the mother, but it won't come. The wolf led the fawn too far from the herd. The young hoofed animal is indeed faster than its peers. Perhaps even an adult caribou couldn't show such results in a fatal race. But the wolf gathers the remnants of strength and still catches up with the fawn. With the light movement, the predator makes the victim stop. The fawn doesn't even need to be knocked down. It's so tired and exhausted that it can no longer resist, as if the wolf turned it off. The predator quickly finishes the victim. Soon, other hunters from the pack join him. The fawn lost, but this hunt went so far that the predators will not return to the herd and will not pursue it. Usually, adults protect the young. Here, it was the opposite. Unexpectedly for the predators, this little one has saved many other deer with its agility. Ponies are much cooler than people think. This horse made a big mistake when engaging with the little hoofed challenger. Their compact, rounded bodies, cute faces, short limbs, combined with dense and soft fur, make these animals incredibly adorable. Additionally, they are small, almost half the size of regular horses in height and dimensions. Hence, there's a stereotype that ponies are a breed developed for children's entertainment. As you can see, this pony attacks its opponent, twice its size, quite seriously. One of the favorite tactics of ponies is to reach the opponent's groin with its powerful teeth. Their small stature gives them an advantage in this regard. For a large horse to bite a small opponent, it needs to lower its head significantly. Ponies, on the other hand, easily reach their target. The horse is shocked by this. Its problem is that it didn't know where this breed of opponent even came from. In reality, ponies were bred for work in mines, not for children's rides. The initial task of ponies was to pull coal-loaded carts through sometimes incredibly steep tunnels in complete or near-complete darkness, heat, and the constant danger of collapses. They are perfectly prepared for such dangerous and complex work. Their modest size is merely a consequence of the necessity to work in low and narrow mines, not a sign of a soft character. On the contrary, if you have to dive into darkness for years, carrying a load several times heavier than your own body, it kind of toughens you up a little bit and makes your character genuinely resilient, doesn't it? Here, the aggressive ram didn't immediately understand that it was dealing with a much cooler, hoofed creature than itself. The pony not only withstood all the blows and head-on attacks from the opponent, but also actively started biting it. Moreover, the small horse is not using even a tenth of its actual strength. It just shows the opponent that messing with a pony is a bad idea. The ram is used to the other farm animals being peaceful, so they back down under its pressure. But this time, it picked the wrong opponent. This duel may not seem cruel or aggressive at all. Just two small, hoofed animals biting and butting at each other at a slow pace. But in reality, the ram was really lucky. If the pony wanted to, it could have broken its spine. Although modern ponies don't really work in mines, they are physically on par with their ancestors, inheriting incredible strength and endurance. Imagine the power of a massive working stallion. Now mentally shrink it into the compact packaging of a pony's body. Now you have an idea of what these cuties are capable of. 
Which case from today were hoofed animals gave a cool resistance to their enemies impressed you the most? <laughs> 